Hi everyone, this is Tammy from Tammy Colors 2, and today you have come for video number 26 in the Time for a Cup of a Celebration of Tea series. We are almost done with this book. Um, it only has 30 pictures, so we're on 26. That's awesome. We have done so many. It's been so fun. And today we are doing Thai iced tea, which is a little bit different. It's iced. Um... I made it this morning. I will tell you, I found a really good video that I will link in the description. She did a much better job than I could have done filming. Um, and she has lived in Thailand. She explains the different, the American version versus the Thai version and compares them side by side herself, which she had never tasted them side by side. She has a channel, I think called Hot Thai Kitchen, but I will link the video in the description um, so you can watch it if you want to know how to make it because that's what I watched and I think she did a really good job especially since she has actually lived in Thailand so she knows <laughs> and I think that's awesome so um, let me talk about the tea for a minute there's not a lot of information it's just a traditional tea drink this is the traditional actual brand that they buy they buy and use um, so she actually tells you how to make it if you don't have this and what to use um, because it's kind of funny. It's really just uh, black tea, Assam traditionally, and food coloring, which makes it orange because they wanted it to be a little brighter, and uh, vanilla, uh, vanilla, ex not vanilla extract, vanilla imitation vanilla flavor. Uh, and there are probably a few other spices in here. Um, I ordered this from Amazon. You can get it at at Asian groceries probably. I never looked for it there because I've had it for a little while. Comes in a bag form also. I got the can because that was easier to store. I might, if I decide to get more of it, I might um, get the bag. But this is traditionally what they use in uh, Thailand. So anyway, uh, I can link this in the description. Um, there's the brand. I mean, it's very recognizable, to be honest. So, um, so this is the drink, I guess. Oh, I don't think I could, um, show it to you. I mean, it's, it's orange and I put it in a, in a tall glass so you can kind of see. Um, I haven't stirred it up, but it kind of naturally kind of, uh, stirred itself I guess. Um, I brewed it exactly the way. I happened to have a big enough French press that I could put four cups of water and three quarter cups of this tea and then I brewed it for five minutes as she explained. Um, the only difference in mine is I, I, I made it basically the traditional way which is how I wanted because I understood what she was saying that the difference in the American and the the Thailand version is the fact that in America we use half and half and in Thailand they use in America we use half and half and sugar and in Thailand they use sweetened condensed milk and in uh, carnation evaporated milk so um you know it's just the tea and evaporated milk and sweetened condensed milk over ice and um, when you pour it in, um, but apparently walking up here, it kind of stirred itself in. It's or the food coloring makes it oranger because it would be browner if uh, if you didn't put the if they didn't add the the orange food coloring in there to make it a little bit brighter because you know that's what people appear to want. I don't really care um, personally. I don't know why they bother. I mean, coolly presented pretty presented food is nice um but if it's brown it's not like I'm not gonna drink it so I don't know I I don't understand the whole marketing thing I think marketing is lost on me in some respects um so but anyway but I had to for lack of a better term bastardize it a little bit I had to kind of use both versions because I can't have sweetened condensed milk um due to my diabetes so I used sweetener and condensed milk so it's not really that much different I mean it has the 
it won't have the sweet and condensed milk taste, which is, I think, what a lot of people would probably like because it's very popular. Um, it, it has its own flavor. I mean, I love sweet and condensed milk and I do miss it. Um, and you can, you know, I looked just for the fun of it. If you could get a um, sugar-free version and there was one on Amazon that was like a sugar-free sweet and condensed coconut milk. And I believe they used urethritol. Um, <laughs> and, but I wasn't going to pay $36 for it. I'm sorry. <laughs> I mean, I I would love to try some of these like, these things, but it's like, dude, you know, no, I'm I'm sorry, um, but I have to investigate making some maybe and see. I don't know if you can even make. The problem is sugar is a chemical reactor, and it makes it thick, and that is what it is. And with a sweetener, you're not gonna get that. You you have to fake it with cornstarch and sweetener and that's how you do it and there are ways um <laughs> i wonder if you could do it with evaporated milk and cornstarch and sweetener you might be able to i'm sure there are people who have tried but i still don't it will never be the same because the sugar is its own thing it creates its own thing but i might try that i might try boiling uh sweetened condensed milk with some sweetener sorry evaporated milk with some sweetener and put some cornstarch in it and see if I get something similar. I have seen recipes that tell you how to make sugar-free sweetened condensed milk. I've just, you know, it, it gets to be a lot, you know, when you are baking and making things and you have to do all of these things just to make this simple little thing that most people can just add in. And it's, just, I, I find it's not worth it sometimes. <laughs> so anyway, that being said, um, so this will be a black tea flavor with a vanilla. And I mean, that's really the flavor is vanilla. Some people say it has additional spices in it, but I don't know, we're gonna find out. Hmm. Oh, it's good. I mean, I would drink it. It reminds me of boba tea, honestly, um, without the, without the bobas. Um, it tastes milky um, and vanilla, and the, the 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 evaporated milk gives it that what you call it protein taste, I believe. Um, that I think makes it what it is. So, I think that's cool. I like it. Mm. Okay, I'll definitely make more of it. Uh, so. Uh, but there wasn't a lot of history on where it came from, so I couldn't I couldn't find that out. I think it just <laughs> probably came over time. I, I couldn't really find any history on it, to be honest. Um, so I have found kind of an inspiration picture. I found a picture of Bangkok, Thailand, and I really liked all of these colors. There's some purple, uh, there's a little blue, there's greens, there's golds, there's reds and oranges, and I thought that that was really pretty. Um, so I'm going to use all of those colors. Um, I pulled out some markers. And then there are different spices here. There's tamarind, cardamom, and star anise, which is probably some of the spices that they use. You can't really taste them, to be honest. If they're there, it's a dusting. And, you know, so... Um, and so I have picked out colors for my tamarind, my cardamom, and my star anise and I left them kind of laying out here so that I would have them in order and know which one I wanted to use for what so uh and that being said I I do need to there's one thing I forgot and that is and I'm making this video like ridiculously long today uh it's not going to be I promise I will still try to make it a half an hour I need a good color for this tea, <laughs> which hmm, BR46 isn't bad, actually. Maybe we could use that. But I feel like I need maybe something orange. Let me see what I have in the orange department and see if one of those match better, maybe. 
I think I could probably do a YR34. That's that's not uh, terribly off, you know. So maybe we'll try some YR34 and use that for the tea color. Um, I don't know how authentic I can make it look, but there's my tea color. I'm not going to draw any. Well, there are ice cubes in it. Oh, I'll have to uh, color my ice cubes, but that won't. Maybe we'll make those sparkly. Anyway, so let's get started. Um, I apologize. I am long-winded today. What are we going to do first? Oh, boy. Um, <laughs> now if I do the gold first, then I'll have to let it dry. Uh, let's try doing the spices, maybe. Mm. Hang on for one second, and I will be right back. Okay, what do I want to start with? Something cool. I wanted to start with the uh, tamarind, which looks like... I'm going to try to do this. <laughs> oh, make sure. I'm trying to keep this in frame this time. So we'll see. I did look up pictures of all of these things. And with any luck, I can make them look like what they're relatively what they're supposed to. Although I'm sure nobody else knows what they look like. <laughs> or... Not everyone knows what they look like. Some people might know. I mean, how many people see tamarind pods? I don't even think I've ever used tamarind. And, oh goodness. If you could see the uh, board, the boredom that my cats are enduring. Well, Domino is sleeping, but... Uh, <laughs> I don't know if you can hear the soft mewling. Probably not. Uh, if you hear anything, <laughs> it's probably Scotty like, I'm bored. <laughs> I love him to death, but geez, he is hard to keep up with. Okay, now cardamom, I'm gonna start with I figure out, let's see, I think it's like bright on the outside. Okay, so I'm gonna do this. Make some cardamom pods. I can color the whole thing in if I want to, because I'm just gonna use another marker on top. cardamom pod picture that I saw. Yep. Okay. So that's the cardamom. And then the star anise. So we're going to do our light color first. I taste none of these flavors in that tea. It's too bad, like, I mean, because it's September, so it's too bad I didn't get to do this one in the summertime. But I like iced tea. It doesn't matter. I don't I don't need to drink it in the summertime. I drink it anytime. Let's see, there's that. And then we put some dark brown on the edges. It's probably gonna bleed a little bit, so I gotta be careful. So how is everybody this week? Um, it's the weather here has been cloudy and very cool, like 60s Fahrenheit. Oh. <sighs> 
I just want to, you know, these these rice burners that drive by with their loud mufflers. I just want to go, that's not cool. I sound old and um, uh, very, very... <laughs> What's the word I'm looking for? Um, like, I'm just, I, I feel like I'm not cool. But let me tell you, <laughs> there is a difference between an engine that is very souped up and it has a very distinctive tone. It is not ear piercingly loud. It does not sound like, I don't know, so, someone, some dog farting or something. Sorry. <laughs> At a high rate of speed. I mean, and you know what I'm talking about. And it's even worse now because you know, I meant to look this up because I'm a car girl and I love cars, um, but I never messed around with souping up the engines and stuff like that. Um, it just wasn't, you know, something that I was interested in personally. And, I, you know, you got to have money to, to sink into it and stuff like that. But uh, they've started doing this thing where they make it sputter on purpose and I mean literally it sounds sometimes like their car is is on one cylinder you know they they rev it up really far they're, they're they're driving they rev it up really fast and then it sounds like it's missing and it it's a thing I can tell it's a thing because too many people are doing it and they're doing it on purpose and it's, it's just, I'm tired of the noise. I think as you get older, it's just all the noise. I mean, there's so much noise pollution anyway. And then you have to deal with these yahoos that drive by. You know, did I ever tell you? I probably did tell you about the guy with the motorcycle. I mean, motorcycles are loud. And I don't like that. I don't like loud noises uh, because I was scared very badly when I was a child by lightning and thunder um, that was very close to my head. <laughs> and so now loud noises, um, I don't wanna say make me nervous, but they could make me jump, they make me uncomfortable. Um, but you know, so, can I use this? No, that's supposed to be milk or something or sweat. Um, but yeah, oh, I know I can use a white gel pen and make some milk or I'll use something. Maybe I'll use a pencil to do it. I'll do something with that. Um, but yeah, so so there was this motorcycle and I don't know if it was a Harley because this man, this man went to work at I think 4.45 in the morning. He went to work. 15 minutes before my alarm went off and yes i realized that i am unusual in that i have my windows open in the summertime as much as i can like i do now and um he would drive by and literally i kid you not it was the loudest motorcycle i have ever heard in my life i mean and i have heard loud motorcycles I didn't think that they could be this loud. And then they get on the main road out here and they go faster and it's even louder. And I feel bad for the people that live behind me. But seriously, I mean, I almost, <laughs> I almost got a lawn chair and sat out there and waited for him. And like, I don't know what I was going to do, stop him and ask him to kindly not drive by any house on this side of the, you know, because it, it was so loud. I can't even describe to you. It was like an airplane taking off in your backyard, like a 747. And I am not joking. I wish I was exaggerating, honestly. But anyway, so I just get tired of all that. And it's, <laughs> it just it never stops. You know, you live in a, a big city and it just, it never stops. The noise. And I guess I'm used to, my husband is very quiet and... I'm very quiet, my house is very quiet, and um, 
there's not usually a lot going on in the house uh, as far as noise and so I think that's like <laughs> desensitizing me to noise <laughs> so you know okay. oops wait 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 wait, wait. Oh, I just realized I sorry about that um so yeah that's my that's my complaint this week we're talking about loud noise loud cars there was a guy like sometime this summer like a month or so ago he was um and it was like 5 30 in the morning and uh i think i know where it was down the street and he was a ways down like go to the end of my street turn left and go down like six blocks and I mean it was a decent amount away from me and he had one of the he has this souped up rice burner and he was he has it so that it it does that sputter thing and he was doing it over and over and over and I was I don't know I was about ready to get out of bed get in my car and try drive down there because it's just like it's bad enough in the middle of the day but in the morning I mean really and I don't know sometimes I want to go to the police and ask if they can sit if they can do anything like can you can you pull them over anyway I'm sorry I don't want to complain I'm not complaining we're not complaining we're just we're just venting because things in life you know I guess if that's the worst thing I have to complain about I'm not doing so bad right uh, so I am, so, so when new things that are going on, I guess I could say, sort of, is when we bought our house, um, it came with a deck. Now, Tammy is not the biggest fan of decks because of the maintenance required with the decks. Uh, and my deck is huge, goes halfway around my house. So it goes, it starts on the garage side and then goes almost all the way around the back side of my house. It's three levels and the people who owned the house before me took care of it to a point and then it looks like maybe they were getting ready to do something like restain it when we bought the house. But like, um... There were dwarf spruces, which are pretty trees if you take care of them. Oh, I've really boogered up these leaves, haven't I? We'll see what we can do. I don't know. I may just have to make them dark and uh, be done with it. Because I was trying to do something <laughs> and I think I really messed it up. <laughs> That's okay. You can always fix it with a darker color. So, so when I, I mean, there were dw two dwarf spruces by our in front of our door front door and and when you don't trim them you can't you can't trim them if you don't keep them up you can't trim them because they're not the kind of tree that you can do that with because the they don't grow back in that part they only do new growth I don't know how to explain it but so it just looks dead right and the ones in the front were completely covering. I mean, when we moved in, it was like they were almost completely covering the front step. <laughs> and then there were like five of them that were like eating my deck rails uh, because they hadn't been trimmed. And then there were two. There were two, there was there were two by the fence, and then there was another one on the back side of my house here. And by the way, the carpenter ants love to live in the pine needles, which, you know, I'm a big fan of all things living and doing their own thing, but I'm sorry, um, I'm not going to make a home for you carpenter ants next to my house because they were in the basement. Like when, when we knew when we bought the house, I mean, they hadn't done anything to the basement because we had it inspected, but, um, they were you could see them crawling around so we had to get a I mean we got a a guy right away and had had him spray and stuff like that I don't like to do those kind of things if I if I don't have to um but I had to get them under control so then I had to remove 
the environments that they like to live in. Plus, there was nothing we could do with the trees because trimming them just makes giant dead spots. And <laughs> we, before we took out the ones, we hadn't decided what we wanted to do with the ones in the front, by the front door. And so we just trimmed them up and they looked like giant mushrooms is really what they looked like. <laughs> because it's what dwarf spruces look like i mean they're they're really pretty trees they have a beautiful color but you gotta keep up with them so i spent like i think the first two years i think but have we been here six or seven years i don't remember so i spent the first two years removing the trees and stuff like that the landscaping it had landscaping at one time they had not taken care of it for a good many years so you know and you, you just can only do so much so we've spent years getting the yard into shape and doing things in the house and it's just you know it's a project owning a house is a project my husband says you don't buy a house you buy a hobby it's not a very fun hobby but uh so the deck has needed something done well and one side of the deck was sinking and it was very hard to find somebody that wanted to fix it at the time they all want to just tear it down and build a new one and i'm not uh i'm not i'm not up for that the cost i don't know what i would do um if the deck wasn't salvageable i would tear it down and make something beautiful you know maybe have a really small one reclaim some of my yard put in some brick and a pergola and make it really pretty um because, you know, decks aren't necessarily beautiful. And I hate maintaining them. But, um, so, finally, you know, we, we, were, we had this big plan to sand it and paint it. Because I didn't think the wood was good enough anymore to sand it, right? And then, so my husband started sanding it last fall. And then it... You know, just life and busy and the weather. I mean, you can't go out and do stuff when it's like 100 degrees outside or 80 or 90 degrees. And so we were sanding it. And it's just like we realized that it was going to be too much. So I started asking. I started getting quotes on how much how much to have somebody do it. Because we needed to get it done. You can't let it, you can't let it linger. Because... I mean, the wood is just rotting and you're going to have to, you know, you're going to have a mess on your hands eventually. So if you want to save it, you got to, got to do something. So I found somebody, <laughs> so, so I found somebody suddenly, um, and he's like, oh, I can do it. You know, we can try to have it done next week. And I'm like, oh, okay. And it was a good price and he's a general contractor. So if I like him. I can have, I've been looking for somebody that can do, because there's a lot of things that need to be done that William and I can't do. So, I mean, I'm really excited that in a week my deck is going to be stained and pretty and awesome and I'm so excited. <laughs> uh, and it's going to cost me money, but, you know, um, how much is my time worth also? You know, if you look at that, you balance it out. I mean... It, it is what it is. It's actually not as expensive as I thought it was going to be. We'll put it that way. So, um, and it's just, they know what they're doing, <laughs> which is even better. He's like, you don't have to sand the whole thing. He's like, we need to clean it. I need to get this black mold off of it. I need to, you know, then we can sand the parts that are, you know, we can replace the parts that need to be replaced and two coats of stain and he's like it'll be nice and I'm like wow okay I didn't think it was good enough to be stained but he says it is and he's done more decks than I have so anyway that's that's exciting I don't know that's I guess when you get older <laughs> it's like the exciting things are doing getting things done with your house right um I want to put this blue somewhere but I want See, I can't decide if I want what colors I want things to be. Although maybe these porcelain, um, these colors today are just, oof, getting me. 
I like what I've done here though. I think this one's gonna be harder for me to figure out what the colors are gonna be. And then I'm gonna have to let it sit when I put the, um, the, I like the way my tea has come out. Look at that. Look how close that is. I'm gonna drip, I, gotta be, <laughs> I did. Well, that's okay. It's just water, we'll let it dry out. I've got time, but yeah, look how close the color is. If you can see the color, look at that. I'll put some, I'll figure out how to make some milky streaks in it. I'll have to test some pages. But anyway, I am going to, I have, I have complained enough and uh, I will uh, go finish this and figure out where I'm going to put all my nice colors. Ooh, I got purple too. I forgot. I've got purple and a lighter red in here. So I got to figure out where to put those. That'll be exciting. Ooh, okay. <laughs> I'm getting ideas. But uh, I will finish this and I will be back. Oh, you know what? I lied. So um, I figured might as well do some gold flocking <laughs> while, you know, on camera because I don't do that very often because I struggle a lot. Um, but, you know, I realized also I didn't ask anybody like, have you ever tried Thai iced tea? Have you been in Thailand and tried it? Have you tried it here? I mean, I don't know where you would get it where I live, honestly. I probably could have just used a, a gel pen for this part, to be honest. I'm trying not to get it on the lines. <laughs> I am using, hopefully this will be nice and shiny, I'm using my Komarabi uh, watercolor paint set, my classic metallics. So I decided I was going to use, um, and I did this side first, go figure. When you're right-handed or left-handed, you always do that side first. And then you're like, well, if I do the other side, I'm going to drag my hand through it. Such is life, right? Um, so, yeah, like, here, well, I mean, I guess I've never looked on a menu at the Thai restaurant for Thai tea. But then again... It would be a struggle for me to order it because they probably wouldn't know how to make it or they might but you know it's like going to a coffee shop and and, and uh having to figure out what doesn't have sugar in it which is nothing anymore what can i drink black coffee that's about the extent of it so I went to, um, they put in a new caribou, which they were all gone. And now apparently society has decided they don't like coffee shops where you actually sit. So they're all, um, except for Starbucks. <laughs> I mean, they're all just drive throughs And personally, I am a weirdo. I realize this. I hate drive throughs I will, I will park my car and get out and go in before I will go through a drive through because I hate them. Like I said, I am weird. Uh, I just get tired of the whole, except for the Chick-fil-A drive through but the Chick-fil-A drive through is very, I don't know what I want to call it, um, intimidating, right? The ones that have the double, which I think they've almost all put in doubles anymore. It's like, why have screens if you're going to have people standing there anyway? Just have people standing there all the time to take orders. I mean, you do anyway. I, I don't understand that model. But anyway, maybe you don't have Chick-fil-A and you don't know what I'm talking about. But if you do, then you know exactly what I'm talking about. Chick-fil-A is very popular. Their food is very good. And... uh there's a funny story about that. Um, back in the 90s, <laughs> uh, and I was in uh, Nashville. Or no, well, it was Pigeon Forge. Sorry, it wasn't Nashville. It was Pigeon Forge. Because we had some friends that worked at Dollywood, my first husband and I. And so we would go down there all the time to see them. 
and run around town, Pigeon Forge, Gatlinburg, uh, Tennessee. And um, so I know it very well. Uh, and so <laughs> the first time I saw Chick-fil-A, because we didn't have them up here in Ohio. I mean, it took a long time to to come up here, which is the case. You know, I don't know. I don't remember where they originated. But we're <laughs> driving by. And I have a very logical brain, okay? My brain uh, doesn't get things sometimes. But I looked at my friend and I said, what is a chick filla? <laughs> and she had to correct me just because I couldn't. I'm like, well, that's not how you say fillet. Fillet is F-I-L-E-T. This is not chick fillet. <laughs> this is chick filla but they want to say filet so that's that's how my brain works humor is lost on me I, I do in all honesty have a hard time with humor sometimes uh but I'm learning it's just hard when your brain doesn't get it you know what I mean it wants to parse out all the the reasoning I always think I have a logical brain, but let me tell you, sometimes it doesn't feel very logical. So. I <sighs> see, I still can't quite get, well, I'll have to try to come back through and erase the parts that I've gotten on the black. That's what bothers me about using watercolor is covering up the black lines and how hard it is not to. But I mean, if you're just doing watercoloring, you don't have to worry about black lines on, you know, like a piece of artwork because you don't have any because you're just watercoloring. So I can see how we're kind of using a medium <laughs> to do something that in a way it wasn't meant to do by using it in a coloring book. But I really like using watercolor in some things because you can't get a water-based medium, a water-based marker that is this shiny. I think that's why we all like the metallics so much. Um, you know, if I don't want to use pencil, it's the easiest way for me to get, um, get where I want to go in in a short amount of time by feathering it out and making the colors lighter and stuff like that so but my page see that's where it was wet so i probably should have done the other side first where i drooped my my drink that i was so proud of the color matching I kind of suck at, at this, but I'm getting better. I mean, the only way you get better is to keep practicing. And try to make it look decent on the back end. So, I think that'll be cool. Then I decided I'm going to use my purple on the back there. Behind this gold, and that's going to be cool. So that's what I'm gonna do. That is my plan, and then we will let me use some of those colors. I'm really, I'm really gonna finish this this time. <laughs> so I'll talk to you in a few minutes. All right, for better or worse, this one is done. I utilized my color scheme as intended, and uh, some things came out better than I thought. You know, I just started using the color and came out pretty good. So I used some, uh, I actually used my uh, Derwent Chinese, Derwent Drawing Chinese White to do all this stuff. And then the, the thin streaks are just a uh, white gel pen. So that's how I did that. You know, there's a little pencil on there, but uh, other than that, it's all marker. So awesome, great. Great colors. I love those colors. So, so cool. Next week, we are doing Tulsi Tea. 
that's interesting that's another one i have never had <laughs> i have i have some downstairs because i bought it for this and i have not tried it yet so it'll be an experiment and it'll be pretty i gotta look up the tell ct plant so anyway that's something to look forward to thank you all for joining me i'm glad everybody's enjoying this series and i will see you in the next video have a great week bye